And we're back on some more almost maximum difficulty Badlands. Yes, yes, we still have the uh, the gates turned on. But in the background, I've been finishing off what's going to be our new plastic press. Oh, no harvest pending. Yeah, well, our new plastic supply. This will, of course, take a long time to spin up. That's one of the reasons I don't normally use Drekos, but I thought it'd be a fun little side project to try this time. The Drekos will stay in here. They'll eat the mealwood. Their chances of laying... Where is it? Come on. Give me the eggs. Which one is it? Oh, wait, that one's still wild. Oh, that must have been a recent acquisition. How are some of these still wild? I really got to turn up the... Uh, the grooming station. Yeah, so glossy drecklet eggs, 28%. The more meal would they eat, the more plastic drecos we get, and the more plastic drecos we get, the more plastic we'll get. Though, we haven't got any just yet. Uh, we still got drecklet eggs. Yeah, we still haven't got a plastic one, though. Mm, never mind. Never mind. We'll just incubate another drecklet egg. I'm just going to keep adding eggs to this, and eventually we'll have two full ranches of them. I'm going to put eight in each ranch. And then all the excess eggs will get dumped in here. And this is going to be great because we should get a absolute metric crap ton of plastic and reed fiber out of all of this. But for now, there's a few other things we need to take care of. First thing I did was I went in here and I removed all the uh, slime lung germs by putting in oxygen deodorizers. And the deodorizers got rid of all the polluted oxygen and all the germs are dying out. Now we got to do the same over here with this little sucker. Where are you? Yeah, that morb over there. And we could keep the morb alive and we could use the morb for things like... Uh, producing polluted oxygen, but no, the only good morb is a dead morb. We're going to get rid of a lot of it and worry about uh, the consequences later. And now the morb goes pop. And it even forgave me before it popped. I didn't want its forgiveness. <laughs> I wanted it gone. The damn thing caused so much annoyance. This uh, this messed up my entire ladder system. But oh, it doesn't matter. We're going to be scrapping that ladder system anyway. Our new ladder system is going to be here. So this is going to be our central spine. We will also be able to put our uh, transport network, the plastic transport grids, right beside it. So we should be able to go all the way up from uh, all the way across the map. Then the deodorizers here are going to get handily to work at destroying all those germs. We don't have any of that slime hanging around. And who should we stick in the neural vacillator this time around? Well, I mean, Janet went in the last time. Uh, Cheaty. I think Cheaty gets his shot to go into the, the neural vacillator. Let's see what they come out with this time around. And we've got plus 10 strength. You know what? That that actually goes with Cheaty. Cheaty, yep. Yep, acquire the trade beef stick. <laughs> uh, very well then. Uh, do we sweep up that egg? I think we're going to sweep up that egg for now. All I'll do is I'll set this to sweep only and allow manual use. And we'll sweep up that directed egg. We can add that into our collection of... Mm, ranchable eggs over here in the corner. We'll dump it in here and it can get sheared up once it's hatched. Work? Yeah, it looks like it did. While trying to trace that egg, I found something interesting. There's a glossy drecklet egg right there. Perfect. The moment this egg is finished, uh, what is it at? 53%. Oh, yeah, that'll be finished in about two cycles. Once that's finished, we're sticking that glossy drecklet egg in there. And we're going to start uh, st dumping those into the critter drop offs. We want to change this entire population until it. What, what is going on here? No, I was pending. Oh, and I also had to dump a bunch of chill into the bottom of this. Um, the hydrogen coming in was at 30, over 30 degrees. That unfortunately doesn't gel with the millwood, which can't survive above uh, 25 degrees. Is it 25 or 30? 30 degrees. So I dumped in an ice temperature shift plate just to chill everything down. And I've left the water in there, so it's it's had a nice chilling effect and made everything handleable. Now up here, let's uh, rummage through these lockers and see what we can find. Uh, snazzy suit. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, who should we put that on? I think two people already have them. You know what? Michael can grab a snazzy suit. Hmm, next locker also had a snazzy suit. Who gets the next one? Yeah, it kind of has to be Tahani, doesn't it? I mean, Tahani should definitely have a snazzy suit on about now. Eh, uh, that's four snazzy suits, and we didn't even have to make a single one. That's some good rolling, actually. Now, next up on the agenda. Well, we can't really get into... Without plastic, we can't get into cooling, so we can't tap into the volcanoes for any power, which kind of limits us. And can't really put together an industrial brick. I think it's time to start exploring. We have seven Atmos suits. Soon we should have... Actually, we have eight Atmos suits. Oh, and we have a blueprint to choose from. Maybe I'm getting pickier as of the longer I play, but I don't really want allergies. I don't want narcoleptic. And I don't want the slow learner. Uh, yeah, we'll just take that pufflet, I suppose. Um, hmm. Yeah. But exploration, it seems, is the name of the game today. So, time to dig down and demolish everything in our way, and time to go up and demolish everything in our way. 
And we can also find out what's going on with the last of these geysers. I want to find this geyser, but we're not going to go straight down. We're too close here. No, 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 no. We're going to expand our, uh, our transport grid. This is going to be our up and down section. So let's get our hands on an awful lot more iron and an awful lot more of everything. Actually, let's check our minerals before we start. Where is our refined metals? Iron, 53.9 tons. Let's see how much we have at the end of this. While we've queued up this little bit of exploration to extend our, uh, what's hopefully our central transport spine and what hopefully doesn't run into any uh, neutronium. If we run into a, a geyser event, we're going to have to take a little chicane around it. But hopefully that doesn't happen. That would always be nice. Uh, at the same time, this is going to take a really long time, namely because most of the stuff is so difficult to dig through. However, there is a small little thing we can do that would be pretty cheap that would help us out if we gave everyone hard digging one. Now, it does mean they won't be able to dig abyss light. They won't be able to dig uh, diamond or obsidian. But they can dig granite. And they can dig some of the harder materials. And it only costs us one morale for each one of them. And because everyone's now on barbecue, an absolutely tremendous amount of barbecue, I might add. We are on... <laughs> we've got 124,000 calories of barbecue to spare on our ravenously difficult uh, dupes. Oh, and at the same time... Here is our oxygen production facility, and you'll notice it's toasty. It's really toasty. It's 78 degrees there in places. Yeah, we got 79, 70, 75, 79. Ooh, yeah, 79 degrees at, at max point. If this was made out of copper or iron, it would be overheating. The only reason it's not overheating is we made it out of steel. That's why gold amalgam is such a, an annoyance to be missing on this map, as your electrolyzer can overheat. Now, the reason it's this hot this quickly is because the water we're dumping into it is this stuff over here. That stuff's 90C. And because that's 90 degrees, it's, of course, well, I think it's 95 is what it's coming out at. Yeah, well, let's say it's 95C water. We're getting 95C oxygen out. However, since there's only eight uh, duplicates consuming oxygen, we're actually... This anti-entry vanilla fire can keep up. I think this stuff's going out at, what, minus 16, minus 20, minus 18. I've turned off all temperature regulation. I just want this whole place to be as icy as possible because the longer this goes on and the more dupes we add the worst that is going to get. Anyway, how's our, uh, how's our dupes looking? Yep, they're pretty much demolishing through everything, sort of like I was expecting. I think our mislocated pod location put us a lot further above the ground than we are, well, a lot further above the oil biome. I think we're up and to the right of where we should have been. I think we probably should have spawned somewhere around here, but yeah, not going to complain. Uh, this is, what are we going to get for blueprints? I would really like another dupe right about now. Unconstructive, no thank you. Anemic, oh, they're, they're, they're the worst. That minus five athletics, it doesn't matter. You keep that till the end. You can't get rid of that. Even if you train them up until they've got 20 athletics, that minus five still affects them. Oh, it's, it, it's just terrible. Small bladder and biohazardous, you know, that one I could work with. Plus seven ranching. Oh, I would like the Volpup, but you know what? A third rancher? Considering how critter heavy we're going, say hello to our newest uh, dupe, Sean. Sean hates all animals. That's what makes them so good at it because they just they, they, they just want to get it done. They're just they're great at it. That's why they've got plus seven ranching. Stress reaction vomiter. Yeah, I can have that overjoyed response balloon artist. Hmm. Hey, Sean. Welcome to the team. Let's get you a bed. Wow. I just realized. Um, hmm. I really need to do some expansion here, don't I? All right. There we go. Uh, that should give us plenty of space for the next set of duplicates that we're going to hire. And oh, crap. They're angry. Let's uh, sweep that immediately and get that away from them. Yep, that's good, good. That's it. it means they've calmed down and we'll have all the eggs swept up to over here. Damn it. I messed that up. That was supposed to be set to actually move their eggs immediately and somehow I messed it up. I think I was changing something somewhere. There we go. It's a high priority. All pincher roll eggs will now get dropped off over there. From now on. Perfect. Actually, where did that last egg go? Okay, there it is. Perfect. Anyway, soon we will have our first glossy directlet egg. Can we drop them off yet? I don't even think we can select them yet, can we? No, there's no option to drop them off until that hatches, so I've got to keep an eye on it. <sighs> Damn it, yeah, like I'm going to remember to do that. Oh, well. Uh, oh, and eggs-wise, wow, we are doing a lot of eggs. That's a hundred eggs we've got sitting around in our evolution chamber waiting to pop. Oh, that was one thing else I wanted to do. I wanted to try out this new filter. They have a solid filter we can use. And one thing that I always wanted to do, which it hopefully simplified things, we'll grab this iron ore. This is the return flow. This brings back all of our meat from both sections. We are, instead of having the meat going the normal way, and see if we can disconnect those two. Ah, yeah. 
what we're going to do instead is we're going to have the all of the meat come in here and then the hmm, we'll have all the meat go out that direction and we'll have everything else go over here and drop off right there and by everything else i'm going to mean eggshells now if we set this up well i can't believe we're selecting meat as an output oh okay, yeah well meat is going to go up and get sent over to the grill Everything else, which should be eggshells, should get sent over to drop down beside the rock crusher. We should just cut down on a little bit of labor, and I mean, it's not that expensive. How much does it cost? 120 watts? Well, that's not continuous. That should only draw 120 watts every time something passes through it, which is actually going to be a fair bit, but not, you know, it's not going to be constant. It will be fine. And what we'll do is we'll get down, go down here, go into organics, and we will select eggshells. So all the eggshells should also get dumped in there, and it just should cut down on a little bit of the labor problems. Oh, uh, not labor problems, labor issues. Oh, and then another thing, we're going to use a gym for our new duplicate as well. I just forgot, remembered that. I have immediately set it so that no one can exit. This is set up so that by default, no one can get outside of our little box room. We don't want anyone leaving this area because if they did, they'd be leaving in an Atmos suit and they would not have any of the skills necessary to use it correctly. Mm, but that means we need a duplicate gym, don't we? Where are we going to put that though? Uh, our new gym is installed. I left a little bit of space so we could stick another bedroom on top. We might need another one of those. Well, maybe not for a while. We, going up to 16 dupes is probably... Yeah, that'd be a nice number to have, actually. Yeah, whatever. We'll leave Sean running on those. And uh, no one else is allowed into that room but newbies. Only newbies get to go in there. So I probably should let some of the others run. We need them to do some work right about now. Uh, at the same time, I've just been doing some tidying up here. I added in some lights to the dining room because that'll help to speed up their eating, which is important. Namely because... These dupes have a tendency to eat very slowly because they've got to eat so many damn calories. Uh, oh, and we have another blueprint to choose from. What have we got today? We have a digger that can't construct, uh, a constructor that can't dig, and a narcoleptic, which I'm never a fan of. You know what? I don't even want the hatch hatchling. It, it, it would be a waste of time, namely because we have so many of these spares just running around down here. How many have we got in there? Yep, too many. Too many critters are running around. Uh, yes, and down here, on our way down, we have run into the perfect opportunity to run into Neutronium. Thank you, cool steam vent. I'm going to now have to chicane around you just to avoid stuff. Uh, left or right? Left or right? I'm thinking... Left. We're going to go left around you and hopefully we don't run into something else. Right, well, I haven't seen any more... I <laughs> encountered any more vents just yet, but... Dear Lord, we're a long way from the, from the bottom of the map. It is a long way down and we still haven't hit the magma yet. I'm just wondering exactly how offset we are with this start. Uh, which reminds me, I'm falling way behind here. I need to start getting more ladders queued up, otherwise my dupes are going to run out of things to do. Cool biome, I'm afraid we're just going to go straight through you. We may accidentally demolish a bunch of you on purpose, but whatever. I don't really care about keeping a cool biome intact. Though I might want to scoop out some bits to the side to make sure that... Uh, the ice doesn't end up pouring down into the next biome. We are through the ice biome, and now we're heading down into the oil biome. We have finally, finally, finally got to the oil biome. It took a while. It took a long while. We had to dig an enormous distance to get down there. That's ludicrous. It should not take that long to get down to the oil biome. All right. I've tried the uh, offset pod locations before, but I didn't realize they could offset you by this much. Oh, I also... Ooh. I also... Uh, Move, put a couple of walls here just to stop any ice. If any ice melts, I don't want it flowing down into the oil biome. We want to try and keep things separate. So hopefully any liquids that end up from around here should just sort of stay in here and not end up flowing down any further. Also, we can't go any further left because it appears there's there's a volcano here. I can't see the volcano, but I can see the results of the volcano in the enormously high temperature obsidian. Anyway, we're going to go down here and we're going to get our hands on some lead. It would be nice to get an enormous amount of lead and a few other bits and bobs, especially the fossil. There is lots of fossil down here as well. We are going to go through the entire oil biome left to right and we're going to core out everything. And is that stickster going to live? What's the temperature in there? 47? Are you going to survive? Yeah, you'll live. You'll live. It will be fine. Perfect, perfect. Hey, right, well, let's uh, demolish this oil biome. And oh, come on. Don't get in the way of my ladder system again. <laughs> I may have to start fiddling around with the schedules. This is just, when lunch is cold, they have to travel a long way. And we're not going to have a lot of plastic for a while. I mean, I think our first glossy Draco has just come online. And I really have to improve the priority on these shearing stations. No, they're getting sheared. It's just, uh... Oh, Christ. Uh, down here, what's going on? No harvest pending? Yeah, no, I... 
I had to dump another bunch of liquid down here to make sure the temperature stayed normal, or temperature shift plate, because, yep, they all got stifled again. But everything's back to normal. All the Dracos are laying. How many eggs have we got? Uh, we have two more glossy Draco eggs. Yep, we will continuously be producing nothing but glossy Dracos from now on. Uh, over here. Oh, eh, more dupes. Mouth breather? No. Mouth breather? No. Unconstructive yokel? No. <laughs> Also a doctor, so yeah, double, triple no. And care package of lime? Thank you. We shall totally get into making an awful lot more steel. Well, once we get our hands on some plastic. How are we looking at manufactured materials? We have 150 kilos of plastic, which means 50 kilos more, and we can produce ourselves a steam turbine. Which reminds me, I should check to see what research I haven't completed yet. We've pretty much hammered through all of the researches in the background, just because there's they can be done. Ooh, that's not a lot of water, but I do remember... Yes, we have a bunch of water up here we can tap into. I think what we're going to do is... Oh, tap into it. There we go. All of that water should now be added down here, down here. Oh, saving is perfectly timed. Though the saves are actually quite livable. And it's going to drop down here. Now, it's 40 degree water. So I was going to put temp shift plates in, but I decided I would put in ice sculptures, which... Okay, they all immediately disappeared. Um... Fine, well, I don't really need to worry too much about chilling the water. Anyway, there's nothing in my base that can get overheated, barred the plants, and Mirth Leaf lasts up until 50C, so not a big deal. How's Sean doing? Sean, how is your skills coming along? Hmm. You know, I'm going to give him two points in research to start, just to increase their, uh, their athletics gain. Their athletics is what's really most important. Right now, everyone else's athletics is... What is that? Eight? Eleven? Hmm. Nine? Well, the... The groomers are not going to do too well, but 17, ooh, 11, 11. Yeah, well, I want everyone's athletics to be at least 10 before we even let them out. Otherwise, they won't be able to keep up with the rest of the squads. All right, with that done, it's time to go back to excavation. Now, I had a, a minor problem. Janet got herself trapped up here and had a little accident. What the, why is that? Never, never mind. Uh, yep, yeah, but Janet had a little accident, so... I was going up here to install our normal little drop problem. You put in a mesh tile beneath the atmosphere checkpoint and then anything that gets trapped inside a suit just literally falls down. And this is exactly what happened. But it fell down here right into our polluted water off-gassing pit, which, yeah, that's just perfect. It just falls down here, it gets off, it off-gasses into oxygen and then it gets uh, converted by our deodorizers. We don't even have to mop it up. How awesome is that? Let's see, polluted water, yeah, 104.4 grams. Yeah, 104.4. Let's see if any of that evaporates at a, a at a future date. Now, uh, oil biome, yeah. This is not a this is not a contiguous oil biome. Is the oil biome split up on this map? It might be. You know what? Let's go over this way and have a quick look as well. Ah, uh, yeah, this might be how Badlands plays out. There's actually different spaces. The, all the uh, the biomes are spread apart by these uh, sort of deserts of granite, igneous rock, and obsidian. So it might be the same with the oil biomes, which means we might end up with multiple oil wells. Oh, and I, and I decided to do geothermal when we might have an absolute, just be swimming in oil wells. Never mind, never mind. Plans were made, plans were made, and we will stick with them. Uh, let's see what's over here on the right. We have a problem. We've got one of those annoying uh, sporkids. Sporkids? I, I always call them spore childs, but no, they're actually sporkids. Yes. Uh, I think a few other people have caught about the same thing. It's just one of those things you look at it, your brain makes the jump and you don't really look at it. So we need to get rid of that as quickly as possible as it just turns out zombie spores. And they don't die in any of this. On the bright side, it's in carbon dioxide. So if we stop that from, from putting off germs, those slicksters, they should eventually eat all the carbon dioxide in there and that will become, well, a vacuum. And that would, oh, that should kill all the zombie spores. The plan, quite simple. We put a brick there, that should seal in this whole area, so when we replace that block, it destroys the foundation of the sporkid. Sporkid falls over and is no longer active, and we replace that tile with a block. Yeah. Problem solved. Now all we gotta worry about is those zombie spores that are in there. If those slicksters weren't in there, I wouldn't let this happen. What i do is I'd uh, come in from an angle and I'd start bricking in the whole area and compressing it up until all of the gases were gone, and I destroyed them all, leaving nothing behind. Oh, and what are we looking at over here? Yes, so it does look like the oil biome is not contiguous, or maybe this is just a portion of the oil biome. Either way, I want all the diamond tiles, and I want all the lead. So let's get around to demolishing this, I suppose. Much better. That looks more like it. That's an oil biome I can get behind. 
Uh, fossil wise, 28 tons of fossil. We can grind up all that fossil to make ourselves some tasty, tasty lime, which we can then turn into steel. Yes, that worked out quite well. Now, I'm going to start digging over here. The reason we want to dig over here is we want to see what's in this geyser slash vent. That will be nice to find out what's in there. Uh, at the same time, there is a fair chunk of the map over there to the left to be explored. So I think we might continue this on, though maybe dodging that volcano and see what else is over that side. But yes, yeah, so far this exploration is going well. Exploration-wise, this is going quite well. Let's see what we've got over here. It's natural gas geyser. Well, we're home with geothermal, so... Well, geothermal? Someone had a better description in the comments. Not quite geothermal, but we're going to be going with the more volcanic slash magma based alternatives. I think we'll also do a temperature spike and tap into this magma down here as well. We'll go like full on into just the geothermal. We're not going to use any natural gas. We're not going to use any crude oil. Do I have to find another use for the crude oil? Maybe lots of plastic? No, we already have a use for that. I don't know. We can boil it off or do something with it. We'll have to find something to do with all the ludicrous amounts of oil lying around on the map. Oh, uh, over here, I dumped in some more temperature shift plates to uh, cool down the area. There was a little bit of stifling going on. Let's see, how is our temperature looking? There we go. Just about right everywhere. I just want to keep it hovering about 30 degrees. The reason being, these drac dracos, what are they? They can live down to 5C. These other ones can also live down to 5C. Don't want the temperature going too low. Don't want it going too high. Though it's still a little bit warm in there, I'm... Uh, you know what? Not going to worry about it. How are we looking? Plastic, 450 kilos. Oh, thank you. 450 kilos. That means we only need 200 to make a steam turbine. We can start getting into doing our industrial brick. But I think it's coming up on the end of the episode, and I do want to start that because that would be more of a tease. You know what? Let's just do a little bit more exploration before we go. We did a little bit of exploration. Just a tad left and right in every direction we could possibly go in. Uh, oh, and before we get started on that, if we do hit the uh, unpause button, it would appear our... Yeah, polluted water detection facility is working at 100% capacity. So all we have to do now is uh, deconstruct these and replace them with new tanks. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Cancel that. All I want to do is replace these two t last tanks and uh, we should be good to go. Oh, okay. With the tank replaced, the beeping has stopped because now the liquid in this tank can keep flowing on. This has gone down below the maximum mark and we've got 10 tons of polluted oxygen to of polluted water to off-gas there. I even mopped up the mistakes. Now, yeah, where were we? Ah, yes. Uh, we've already got natural gas over here. What was the next one around? Yeah, there's a volcano over there, of course. Ah, there was hot polluted oxygen. Yes, so... A waste. No one cares about that one. Someday we'll find a use for them. Someday. Oh, iron volcano. Well, we've, we've already got... How much iron have we got? We've got 97 tons of iron. No! What the... Oh... Water. Yes, I accidentally spilled water in here. This is why you're supposed to put in a chicane before you go into the oil biome, but of course I didn't. I thought I knew better, but I obviously did not know better. Anyway, over this side, there was another one. Ah, yes, we have a saltwater geyser, which, yeah, that's perfect. That's their only, that's their second source of water. I'm going to dig out a pit for that and start immediately collecting that. We've also got this massive, massive cold biome. Look at the size of this thing. And it even turned us out a bunch of cool vests. Anyone want a cool vest? Anyone? No, no. Yeah, neither did I. No one wanted the cool vests. We, yeah, we got five cool vests and a warm sweater. So no one cares. Barring that, though, I think that covers everything. Was there anything we missed? Uh, there's pr there might be one or two around the edges, but that pretty much gives us a roundup of all the geysers and vents we have. So right now... Now that we know what we have on the map, we can start planning ahead to see what we're going to do. Which, yeah, let's face it, it was going to be lots of uh, magma-based power combined with a, a hot industrial brick. We're going to run a hot industrial sauna, namely because there's going to be so much hot obsidian around the map. There's all this boiling hot obsidian everywhere. If we turn on the temperature overlays here, yeah, there, there's just so much hot obsidian. We need a hot industrial brick or somewhere to dispose of it all in. Uh, Dreco wise we're already up to 1200 kilos of plastic yeah we got plenty of plastic now we can immediately next episode we're dumping straight into getting an industrial sauna up and running uh, that industrial sauna will oh it's only purpose will be to turn out steel anyway I know there wasn't that much that went on this round but it was more a case if we wanted to explore and figure out exactly what we've got available to us and we probably popped the achievement for 90% exploration while we're at it anyway I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck